So, so um, yes, I will start, as I mentioned, with a, a short introduction. Um, so what is the fit for i project? So fit for i is an acronym for fostering improved training tools for responsible research and innovation. So what is responsible research and innovation? We all know that science and technology can create risk and ethical dilemmas. Therefore, uh, our I seeks to bring uh, res research and innovation into the open to anticipate consequences and to involve the society. Societal actors such as researchers, citizens, policymakers, um, businesses or NGOs work together during a research process to better align um, the processes and outcomes with values, needs, and expectations of society. So, in short, it means that um, RI means to involve all stakeholders at all levels to minimize the potential negative impact of research and innovation. Um, so, there have been de developed many definitions um, which each of which uh, emphasizes different components and uh, we've summarized here a few so our i um, can mean mutual responsiveness between uh, innovators and social actors um, it can mean responsibility for the future impacts of research innovation and it can mean um, alignment alignment to research and innovation process and then out, it outcomes to values, needs, and expectations of the society, or it can mean reflexivity on the moral acceptability of new technologies and innovation. Um, more practical, RI um, can be seen as an umbrella concept. So um, it includes different key criteria and also conceptual dimensions. So on this slide, you can see the key criteria um, that it includes so such as gender equality um, an ethical dimension in the research uh, process and content then open access to research results um, formal and informal science education and also public and societal engagement and um, governance so aiming at uh, creating models uh, for the these other five components and more recently also the key criteria sustainability and social justice social, social justice or inclusion have been added to this concept um, so the conceptual dimensions um, you can see here so diversity and inclusion um, for example, means that you involve as early as possible a wide range of actors to strengthen the democracy and also to broaden your sources of expertise, uh, different disciplines and different perspectives. Then RI also means to be anticipative and reflective. So you can envision the impacts and reflect on the underlying assumptions and values and, and the purposes. So to try to see how your research um, would affect the future. Then one other conceptual dimension is to be open and transparent. So it means to communicate the methods and the results and inclusion and to enable dialogue with the public. And the last conceptual dimension is uh, responsiveness and to be adaptive to change. So this means that you are able to modify um, your modes of thought and behavior according the circumstances or the feedback you get from including societal actors. Um, so this is uh, the definition of RI and uh, I also have um, a definition of open science, a bit shorter now. Um, so we took the definition from the Foster website, so the, which says that open science is a practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate, contribute, because the research data, the lab notes, and all other research processes are freely available, um, and the terms under which they are available allow the reuse, the redis redistribution, and the reproduction. 
of the research. So, and in short, we can say it's the movement to make scientific research data and dissemination accessible to all levels of an acquiring society. And um, yeah, here is just a, a picture of the four fundamental rules of open science. So, um, transparency, um, accessibility, available and free and uh, reusable. So just to illustrate this in short. And um, now I would like to take a few minutes to talk about the Fit for RI project. Um, so we are a project um, where with a consortium of 12 partners from nine countries and um, we have one more year to go so we started in 2017 and um, the project moves um, from the assumption that there's a serious gap between the potential role that our eye and open science could play in the research environment and that they actually play so there is a potential for improvement in that sense. And fit for ri is intended to help mainstream RI and open science um, through transforming them into um, a set of strategies and means. So um, we work uh, towards two uh, key objectives. So to bridge this gap and activate institutional change. One of them is training and the other one is governance settings. And um, we um, have, yeah, we have three strand, uh, strands to, uh, that we work on. So um, the first strand is the analytical strand. So we want to understand which trends, barriers, drivers, interest and values influence the adoption of our eye and open science. And for example, also do sectors and national contexts play a role? And then we uh, work on yeah, a testing strand. So we observe our eye and open science in action. Uh, and how we do this is that we um, conduct for co-creation experiments to figure out um, possible solution in terms of training approaches and governance settings to see what works and what doesn't. And then the uh, third strand is um, the proactive strand about promotion and sharing. So we want to promote changes, um, develop training tools and evidence-based guidelines and governance settings. So um, just um, quickly, so what we've uh, done so far and what we are currently working on. So in the analyt analytical strand, the first activity was the mapping and benchmarking process with the key question, why is RI less widespread, accepted and embedded in research organization than it was expected? And um, in order to analyze the diffusion and embedment of our eye and open science and to map these general trends and barriers. Um, our approach was to do a literature review and uh, a set of focus groups and a benchmarking exercise. And the result of this was uh, 142 um, um, yeah, deliverable report on the literature review. Um, but, so what we tried here is to summarize this a bit. So we created these uh, graphics. So um, you can see here on the left hand side, the critical trends shaping signs, such as hyper competition or increasing pressure in assessment systems or the increasing mobility of researchers. On the right hand side, right -hand side we have some barriers uh, of RI and open science. So which can be, for example, resistance to change or the uncertainty about the concept or, for example, lack of training. And uh, here you can see um, um, drivers of RI and open science. So how can RI and open science be moved forward? So these can be political, economic or social, technological and or environmental. And there are seven different ways um, to interpret it uh, our eye and open science, so perspectives, uh, how to see it. So you can, for example, uh, look at our eye from a demo democratic perspective, or you can see our eye as an opportunity, 
or um, for management or to better align the values of society and research. And uh, the report and the literature review and also this uh, um, like visual graphic summary are available online. So here we uh, include the links. And if you want to learn more about this um, mapping and benchmarking exercise, we already had one webinar about that. Um, so um, you can yeah, access the link and uh, watch the recording. Um, um, yes, so that's for the analytical part. And um, in addition to that, we've also um, conducted or we are conducting for co-creation experiments, as I mentioned, to observe our eye and open science in action. So four of our partners, um, yeah, uh, organizing these um, experiments where they uh, um, have focus groups and interviews um, to yeah, engage with their environment, with the research uh, institute, in their research institution. And um, so an experiment can, yeah, can be uh, described as an exercise of engaging different actors. So the quadruple helix actors, which are university, industry, policymakers, and society into the design uh, of a research project. And this is how we want to understand uh, how institutions need to change their organizational frameworks and allow better RI embedment and to provide an enhanced value for the uh, actors. So you can find more uh, information on that on our website and we will um, have a blog post of each about each of the experiments uh, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned and we will um, yeah, post that on Twitter and share it with you. And also we will have another webinar about the experiments for sure. So, then uh, in terms of activities, we've also done, uh, in terms of training, we've done a content mapping and meta analysis of the training materials that are already out there. So my colleagues created and integrated our eye and open science taxonomy, and we are collecting our eye training materials on the FOSTER portal. Um, so you can uh, go there and you also can now uh, um, get notifications if there are new uh, resources. So um, this is also mentioned in a blog post on our website. And yes, uh, today we will uh, learn about the um, part, the second part of our uh, understanding strand, the analytical strand, which was a sectorial diagnosis about the variability of RI and open science. And I would like now to uh, pass on the word to Harro van Lente. I stop sharing now. <laughs>